Hello and welcome to this first in a series of videos where we're going to be looking at Groove Agent SE5. Now, Groove Agent, as I'll call it for brevity rather than the whole title, has been included with Cubase for quite a while, but I'm going to take a look at it and using it as a drum sampler, so a sample playback machine, rather than just using it for the presets which come with it, which have been explored in another video. So the idea here is that you're going to use it in lieu of something like battery, etc. Or maybe an older sampler that you've been using. And you can see it's actually got some really interesting and nice features that make it quite usable and probably things that you may have missed if you haven't spent a bit of time either reading the manual or digging under the covers. So let's get started. Just going to create Groove Agent SE as an instrument track. And then we sit there, I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger and look at Groove Agent SE itself. So if you want to look at the basics of this, you can have a look at another video on my channel, but I'm just going to look at importing samples, etc. today. Now, this is one of the areas where you may find if you just tried having a quick play with it, it wouldn't make much sense because you might just click on the pads, nothing happens, you right click and there's no way to put samples in necessarily. And the reason for that is you need to drag them onto the pads, which once you get used to it is fine. But initially, if you don't know that's how you're using it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So I'm going to import some audio. Now I've got this set to a keyboard shortcut, shift control out I. And let's just import a snare. So here I'm actually using Wave Alchemy's DRM drums. So Wave Alchemy do a really great sample packs. Uh, this is a free one and it's got a rare drum machine which has been multi-sampled, which is going to be useful as you will see a bit later on. So just going to pick that last snare there. And here it is. I'm just going to drag that onto D1. Now you see we get three options here. So initially, the top two won't make any difference. So this will add it, that actually replaces it. Now this is supposed to do a multi-sample thing, but certainly for me, it's not working at the moment. So we're just gonna do that on there. And now I can play it either by playing on the key on screen or by playing on my MIDI keyboard. You can see it responds to velocity, etc. Now, while you're doing this, you'll see when you click on a pad, the display changes. But if you play a MIDI note, you can see the display doesn't follow what you're doing. So I've clicked on C1, which I'm going to assign to a kick drum in a minute, but the display isn't showing it. Now that is fixed by doing MIDI follow, and there you'll do that. That will become much more useful later on when we look at layering samples, etc. So to add any more samples, it's a repeat of what we did earlier on. So I'm just going to import a bass drum sample, kick drum. So just get that. Again, that's imported into the project. Put that onto there. And now I've got bass on C1 and snare on D. And it's following appropriately. So that's fairly basic sample player kind of stuff. There's plenty of features we can look at now. So the first one is Groove Agent SE has multiple outputs. Now initially it sends it out just through kit mixer. Uh, the mixer, I, I don't use it a great deal because it just offers things which I'd rather have in the main mixer in Cubase, but you do have the option to put effects, this and the other and so on, on each channel. But I prefer just to send things straight out now, initially, everything is out of the main mix, but you can change that quickly. So let's say we want to send this snare out of a different output. We can do that really easily just by picking the output here. So if we pick out two, handily it creates that output and turns it on, which is uh, easier than the rigmarole you used to have to go through. So if we expand this instrument track, because instrument tracks can now have multiple outputs, so you'll see that the snare is coming out of that output and the kick drum, and in fact, the rest of all the other samples will come out of the main output. So that can make it really quick and easy to set up separate outputs. And then you can do all your processing in Cubase's mixer, which generally makes life a lot easier, particularly when you come back to a project later on. 
Now, assigning multiple samples. So we're going to look at how you assign multiple samples to a pad. So for instance, here, we've just got one on each one and it scales with velocity. So basically, if I play at a low velocity, as you can see on the pad there, or high velocity, just scaling volume. We'll look at that in more detail in a future video in the series, but what I want to look at is how you assign multiple samples. So I'm going to just import some more snare drum samples. So back to the snare one area, and you can see we've got all these. Now the R's are for round robins, which we're going to look at in a second. So there's effectively eight samples of each accent. So we've got eight of level zero, eight of level one, eight of level two, and eight of level three. So I'm going to import all eight of those quiet snare samples. So put them all on that track and you can see they're largely the same if I just play them back. Only small variations between them. And I'm going to colour code them to make it a little easier to see. So I'll make them a greeny colour. I'm colour blind by the way, so that makes this always really fun because they haven't picked the most uh, different of sample of uh, colours. And then some of the level ones. No, nope. so let's make them a brighter colour. And then I'm going to put the level twos and the level threes in the same kind of way. And finally, oh, let's just close that for a second, just so we see all the samples. And finally, the highest levels. Let's just reuse that. All on the same track. And there we go. So we've got those four different levels of samples available there. And now I'm just going to clear this pad. So you see how to do that. You can just right click and then remove all samples. So I'm going to put on a level one and a level two and a level three. Now there's different ways to do it. So the first one is we can just click that. So here's the quietest one. I'm going to put it using the plus. And then I'm going to add this one on again using the plus. So that's the next level up. So you can see we've got level zero there and level one there. And then level two and then level three. So we've got four different velocity levels here. And if I play this with the pad on screen, so you can see what's happening at low velocities, that sample gets played at high velocities, that sample gets played. So we're not only getting a change in volume, we're also getting a change in tone to really accurately represent the behavior of the original machine. So that's one mode and that's the velocity mode. Now you can adjust these fairly easily. So you can do it with the numbers or you can just drag the border between them. So let's say you only want this sample to happen at the very highest velocities. We can just drag that up to there. And now our accent two level is gonna take more. And it's only at the very highest velocities that that one's gonna come in. So it's pretty useful. Now, We've got other variations. So I'm going to do this on the D sharp one pad, just so you see what happens there. And also adding multiples at the same time. So I'm going to highlight all of these level three snares and then put them onto D sharp one. Now, initially you can see it's in the same mode as before. And while we're getting that volume change, it's just using different samples, but the other modes here are really useful. So round robin, is just going to play a different sample each time we play. So you can see it's playing that and you get these subtle variations. So if you're doing any, you know, 16th snare drum rolls, etc., doing this will much more accurately simulate what's happening with a real machine because this is actually an analog machine. So each time the snare is hit, it's slightly different and that's going to stop things sounding quite as machine gunny. Sometimes you want them to, but often you don't and this will help. There's a couple of other modes. There's random, 
which just does the same kind of thing but just randomly picks one but you can see there we had two in a row which were the same and if you don't want that if you've got something more variation in mind random exclusive means well that's random it won't pick the one that's just been played so you'll always get some kind of a variation so round robin sometimes depending on the samples you got you may hear a pattern in there that you may or may not want but the random uh, will get around that uh, layer just means that all of the samples get played at the same level so i'm just going to play that once but at a low velocity so you get the idea but that means it's playing all of them if we do it really loud then it will be uh, incredibly loud now assigning these samples uh, we're going to look at that in a future video but assigning different samples to pads etc we can do so you can drag these around so if we wanted to move that to the more traditional E for another snare, we can just drag that over there. And there we go. That's now moved to E and will be played with E on my keyboard. And if you want to copy them, you can do it as you'd expect with Cubase. So out drag will do that. So if we wanted to move it to another key, I know it'll be the wrong mapping, but never mind just move that to there and you can see the plus shows that it's making a copy and they're now copied there uh, there's a few other things you can do obviously these are fairly cryptic sometimes so you can right click and we've got this menu where you've got lots of options uh, most importantly rename pad so we can just call that kick etc snare and so on and if you want to you can do some coloring in as well so you can set the color of the pads and this that and the other if that's, uh, if that's what floats your boat, then that's okay. So this is a first look at just setting up some samples in Groove Agent SE5. I hope you found that useful. And in the rest of the series, we're going to cover more detail on what you can do to edit your sounds and make them more interesting and look at some of the really useful features of Groove Agent when using it as a drum sampler.